the Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegand, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heika when the postmaster general informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heika? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heika. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish. But when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Heika. Two miles west of Heika, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heika and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Rover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heika, St. Wendell and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. history meeting at LTC in the Wells Fargo room. Okay, we have a young lady here who is the spark plug of our uh, group here, and she'd like to announce who we are and uh, what we're all about this evening. And uh, I'll let her go identify herself, please. Go right ahead. My name is Kathy Sixel, and I want to welcome everybody. And good evening, you historians. You'll be historians this evening. And uh, this is the meeting of the Greater Centerville Historians, and we meet once a month. We meet in this room, and uh, eventually the uh, DVDs will be archived at the LTC Library. And uh, it's always nice to have all these new people. The only rules we have, we're rather laid back, is that please raise your hand when you have information so that Jerry can get over to you so we don't miss it. And to always state your full name, and try to refrain from using nicknames because in future years we don't know anybody by nicknames anymore when, when we're gone. And uh, please do not visit when someone is speaking because it picks up in the camera. And uh, if we pass pictures, always keep passing around and so that eventually they get back to the uh, person who brought them. And I would like to thank Joyce Kramer for all the names that she gave me. If it wouldn't have been for Joyce, I wouldn't have known who to send cards out to. So thank you, Joyce, and again, I'm so glad you're all here. Okay, as far as the evening agenda, could you give us a little starting point there? We normally do certain things. Go right ahead. Um, we will have um, La Follette School this evening, and we're going to start with a, a short clip that Charlie and uh, Jerry O'Neill did okay. of the school. All right. And uh, we'll also start with the introduction, so I'll have your name one more time, please. Kathy Sixel. Thank you very much. And who do you have here, please? Charlie Bauer from Newton. From Newton? Okay, good idea, Charlie. I like that. Yeah. Melvin Yaney from Cleveland. Thank you, Melvin. Leslie Gakey from Manitowoc. Thank you. Wilbur Gakey from Cleveland. I graduated in 41 or 42 from the Fowlett School. Very good. Good thing you mentioned that. I want to hear that. Okay, go right ahead, please. Caroline Gakey, Cleveland. Well, thank you. Lawrence Cross, Newton. Okay, thank you. And who do you have here? Kathy Wagner, Cleveland. Thank you, Kathy. And who do you have here, please? Walter Chris, Cleveland. Thank you, Walter. Eugene Moiser from Town Mobile. Thank you. And who do you have here, please? Alan Hirschman from Sheboygan. Okay. You didn't graduate from the La Follette, or? Yes, I did. Could you give us a year on that, please? I can't remember that. Oh, okay. <laughs> right now. We'll have a lot of help here. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? Arnold Hirschman, Sheboygan. Okay. And did you graduate from there also? From really La Follette? Well. Okay, okay, thank you. And who do you have here, please? Naomi Schmidt from Elkhart Lake, and my dad attended La Follette School, and he was born in 1887. Really? Wow. Oh, thank you. Good. And who do you have here, please? Dan Schmidt, Elkhart Lake. Thank you very much. And who do you have here? Bernice Schnell, and all our family from my dad on, when, and my grandpa went there. Really? So we got to talk to you tonight. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and who do you have here, please? My name is Leroy Schnell. I live in the town of Centerville. Okay, very good. And who do you have here, please? Virginia Schutte, Timmy. Okay, and did you graduate from uh, La Pala? Yeah, I think it was 51. Okay, great. We'll be talking to you. And who do you have here, please? Audrey Ertl, St. Nazians. Okay, thank you. And who do you have here? Uh, Fred Jacoby from Manitowoc. Thank you, Fred. My father... Uh, and his family went to that school. All right, thank you. And who do you have here, please? Rick Byersdorf, Tom and Mimi. <coughs> thank you very much. And who do you have here, please? Edith Lutzi, Cleveland. Okay, thank you. Joyce Kramer, 
Cleveland. Okay. And I think Alan graduated in 1954. Okay. <laughs> good job. <laughs> and I graduated in 48. 48. Very good. Thank you. Lorraine Twin from Cleveland. Yes. Thank you. And who do you hear, please? Nancy Oldrick from Cleveland. And I went to school there first and second grade, and then they closed the school. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and who do you hear, please? Richard Zill from Marinwalk. I think it was 1953 I graduated. Okay. I got thrown out. All right. <laughs> when you were thrown out. Huh? <laughs> and who do you hear, please? Marilyn Zill, Manitowoc. Thank you for coming, Marilyn. And who do you hear, please? John Wiegand, town of Centerville. Okay, thank you. And who do you hear, please? Willard Mathias, Cleveland. Thank you. Very good. And who do you hear? Alex Mathias, Cleveland. Thank you, Alice. And again, who do we hear? Jesse Huntsman, Cleveland. Okay, did you graduate from La Pala? I don't think so, but I went there. You went there? But oh. I don't know what year. Okay, we're going to work on that. <laughs> and who do you have here, please? Uh, Irene Dine, Cleveland. Okay, thank you, Irene. And myself, Jerry O'Neill, the videographer for the evening. Uh, as Kathy mentioned, we'll be having a short clip. It was taken by Charlie and myself late uh, 2006 in November, but it was a windy day, and you're going to hear Mother Nature blowing a lot of wind at the microphone. So we'll go on with the clip. Mr. Charlie Bauer again, and he's going to provide some other information in regard to the La Follette School. Go right ahead, please. Yes, we're at the La Follette School, District Number 2, which is located in Section 5. We're on Point Creek Road. The building is located on the north side of the road, and the intersection here is Union Road, and the school is east of Union Road and north of Point Creek Road, and the house number here is 88. 30 Point Creek Road. The original building was built more up here where the apple orchard was. Okay. And when they built this building that we're going to see here on the camera, they built that building in 1873 and they moved it further east to get it away from the cheese factory because the students were always bothering the workers over at the cheese factory. Okay. At least that's what I read. Okay. All right. So we're just moving a few feet down the road here. Yes, I forget, I'm about two, three hundred feet to the to the east. Okay, I'm going to just pan over. I'll let you follow me, Charlie. And, and this this building here pretty much looks like it it did as it was in school operation. Okay. And it was named after Robert La Follette. Okay, and that's from Wisconsin. Yes. And I believe he was a senator, and I think he even ran for president. Okay. And anything else on that school, Charlie? Well, it's, separate, it's a wood frame building. Okay. And, and all the school districts in, in Cleveland weren't wood frame. All right. But this is a wood frame one as long as, uh, same as uh, Point River School was a wood frame building. Okay. And at this point, it doesn't look like anybody did too much remodeling of the actual school from my, what no, I see. This looks like the original building here. This building here was built in 1873. Okay. And it says in here that the school district was organized in 1856. Okay. And, and uh, this building they used until they consolidated in the early 1960s. All right. Very good, Charlie. Thank you. Lady here who has presented a picture on our uh, chart, and she'll indicate what it's all about. Kathy Sixel, and the card I sent out was the second La Follette School. Correct me if I'm wrong, there first was a log cabin school, and this was the next school, and you can see it's real plain at this time yet, and there was a little shed next to it, but that didn't show up very good. That must have been a real, real old photo. Anybody else want to comment and add now? Frederick? <laughs> we got a gentleman here who uh, apparently raised his hand, I don't know, reluctantly? No, or I, I didn't even raise my hand. You didn't even raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm here, so go right ahead, please. Identify yourself, please. I'm Fred Jacoby, and, and uh, the information I've got is from the, um, the school annuals from uh, starting in 1906 till they closed down the county rural school system. Okay. And I'll name the teachers and the board members okay. uh, from that time. Um, the first, in 1906, there were teachers before that, of course, but but the record was different because that school annual was only uh, kept up, I think, from 1906. Okay. And before that, 
there would have to be some unofficial records probably within the district, something right. like that. Okay. Uh, but it started out with a, an M. Fitzgerald, the first teacher. They don't uh, give the first name? Just M. This, okay. They do sometimes, but this time it's M. Fitzgerald. Right. Okay. And uh, the clerk was uh, Fred Jacoby. Uh, the director, uh, Gust Zill. And the treasurer was William Deasing. And then uh, she was followed by Oscar, I think it was she, Os Oscar Schmitz, then Ella Schneider uh, for several years, four or five years, then uh, uh, Genevieve Sullivan, and then... Um, uh, Gustav Hintz had um, got the job of director. Then there was uh, Gertrude Hofeld's teaching, and then one year something missing, but uh, Gertrude Hofeld teaches another couple of years, so she must be the missing on that missing page. There's a, a page missing. Uh, so that's it. And then Herb Klessig got elected to the district, replacing the, someone else. You know, this one. I'll just name the ones that kept replacing others. And then there was Gladys Trossen for a couple of years, and then uh, the first use of the La Follette name uh, came into it. Fighting Bob La Follette was a pretty big hero. I think I think he was a member. It was anyone confirm that Progressive Party? It was I think. Right. Yeah, I think so. He was pretty big stuff for Wisconsin, and um, then uh, Gladys Trossen, Esker Kepke, Bernice Trossen, Agnes Logan, Logan for several years. And then Herman Lutze was uh, elected to the school board. And then a Dorothy Goldie, and we're up to 28 now. Then uh, Dorothy Goldie taught for about, uh, what is it, about eight years here. And um, Louis uh, Schutt uh, got elected to the school board. And then uh, Clarence Silversack was a teacher for a couple years. And Marion Keel. And then Art Sixel was elected to the school board. And then Olivia Katarabic uh, taught there. Um, so it looks like seven or eight years, and Walter Dittman was elected to the school board, as was Edgar Jacoby. Um, then, um, 1945 and 46, Dolores Tilke, who wrote uh, the article for could this. You, could you hold that up one more time? Uh, the, the, the annual, uh, the 1948 Hold it there, please. Okay, she wrote that? She wrote the article for La Fala School. Okay, all right. Every teacher that was I presently see. teaching at that time wrote that. All right, thank you. And I would think people around here would know Dolores. Uh, then Frederick Trittner taught for about four years. Ray Gurdigut was on the school board. Albert Jacoby, better known as Bud, was on. And then uh, we're up to 4950. Harry Vogel was elected to the school board, and these years were when Frederick Trittner was teaching there. And then Audrey Schumacher. And... Um, then Althea Wilson for three years, Ethel Ewen, I-W-E-N, -I -W and uh, Gerhard Lutze was elected to the school board, Marlon Lorfeld, <coughs> Agnes Mayer uh, for two years, Richard Sewer for two years, and in 60-61, um, the district closed, the, they stopped operating there, and they went down to Centerville One Point River School. And I don't know if that was one or two years, maybe someone here can say. Well, I was there two years. Two years then, okay. It was really a pretty, I would think, right down the road, a rather convenient uh, consolidation. Uh, maybe not for the people that live close, you know, that's the way it goes. So this information comes out of these school annuals, and it, you can find that. Anyone can check and find out more detailed information. Uh, there's a complete set of those school annuals in the, at the Historical Society and at the Mantua Public Library. Okay, very good. Good job, Fred. Thank you. Lynn Bosch is on the Union route. Okay, thank you for coming. We got a young lady who raised her hand and she has some information. Go right ahead, please. Joyce Kramer. Um, I have some pictures where the building must have been changed. Okay, can you Several. hold them up and can you tip them ahead just a little bit so they don't, they don't glare? I'm going to take... One was in 1907 when my mother was a student there. Okay, which one was that? The one with the kids on here. Okay, hold her steady and I'll get a picture of that. And could you give that uh, year again, please? It's, I think it was 1907. 1907. Give or take the year or two. Okay, and the other picture that you the have? The other picture, I don't know if it was before or after, but if you see on top here, this little window up here, Yeah. that's not on this picture. Okay, hold that other picture that you just have there in your hand. I'll just put that. Now, so they must have added that later. 
So what we're saying, if I'm looking at the two schoolhouses, and I'm sure we will pass this around, the was it the same schoolhouse I'm looking at, or is it two different It's the buildings? same schoolhouse. Same schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. And who went there from your relatives? My mother. Your mother. And her name was what? Lily Barthel. Lily Barthel. Okay. And what year was that? Can you recall that or see, know I, that? Around 1907. 1907. Okay. Very good. Have you got anything else to show us? Well, yeah, a lot, but <laughs> I'll pass it around. Okay, very good. We'll be back to you. Okay, we have a gentleman here who is adding a little more information pertaining to the school framework itself. Go right ahead, please. Well, the, the 100th anniversary uh, centennial history of the schools uh, t has a paragraph in there about how the building was improved. And um, in 1887, they added the belfry and um, put new clapboards and black on the outside, and blackboards on the inside, and um, so on. Re redid the whole inside, all the inside walls with new wainscoting and blackboards and side walls okay. at that time. And that year, one more time? 1887. Okay. Okay, I've got a question for whoever, and I'll leave the camera running on Fred. The picture that Kathy shows on her clip or her uh, overhead, does that look like the same building to you, or is that an older picture of, of the La Follette School? You mean that one? Yeah. Well, there's a different one up there. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, I guess the cameraman had a question pertaining to the picture that was on the postcard sent out to the people versus what we see now. Go right ahead, please. Um, La Follette School was first um, just a simple building, and later things were uh, added. It first was known as Jacoby School until 1918. 1852, first school was a log building. 1873, second school was built. 1887, a belfry was added. Closed in 1959, now used for storage. And building is owned by Jerome Shima. Is that correct, Joyce? That would be Joyce Creamer's niece. Okay. Or her husband. Okay, Sandra and her husband. Okay. Okay, yeah. No, that was uh, well, how the Wafala well, School was, first of all. Okay, very good. Thank you. In 1800s or uh, early 1900s. Okay, I'm going to just shoot that. And who donated that picture? I don't know. It came when I did the um, history of the township. Okay. That, yeah, quite a group of students for that school. Right. Wow. That filled that building up. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'll just uh, name my classmates. Yes. Donald Sixel. Okay. Uh, Angeline and Bernetta Voss. Okay. Uh, Laverne Zill. Okay. Mary Finkelmeyer and myself. Okay. So you were in, in what class would this have been? Well, that through the eighth grades. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was all the ones that went with you through the eighth grades. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And, and I had to live with Karabik for seven years. That was a teacher? And, of course, we had outdoor toilets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and an old coal-burning stove. Okay. Could you tell us where those outdoor toilets were and if they were separate? Yeah, they were separate in back of the school. In back of the school. Right. Okay. There were a wooden structure also? Yes. A little breezy? <laughs> in the winter? In the winter, huh? <laughs> of course, there was a woodshed out there, too. There was a woodshed out there, yeah. too. Okay. And while you went to school, did you have any duties to do for the teacher uh, before, after, or whatever at school? I think there was some wood or coal <laughs> care. Okay. All right. And otherwise, I guess playing ball, over, tossing over the school building. Oh, tossing it over the school building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you know how big the property was that the school sat on? Can you give us some uh, footage? Was it enlarged too or not? <coughs> I'm not sure. Maybe this gentleman here next to you might be your brother, I believe? Yes. Could you identify yourself, please? Wilbur Geeky. <coughs> and I think I had Olivia Karabic for at least seven years, seven oh. grades. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you ask about the outdoor toilets, they got flipped over at Halloween one year. Okay. <laughs> I helped rebuild them. <laughs> uh, in the year of 2000, 
my wife and I were down to Phoenix, Arizona, and Olivia Kadarabic uh, got married in later years, and her name was Olivia Gill. <coughs> okay. That was, we looked that was your teacher. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that was your teacher? That was my teacher, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, we looked her up down in Arizona one day, and then we made an appointment to have dinner with her the next evening. And uh, we told her to pick a place, and of all places, she picked Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe we ran up a $42 bill for three people at Denny's? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we spent the evening with her, and she had all the scrapbooks with all the class pictures and stuff. Really? And then uh, we had Christmas cards exchanged for a year or maybe two. Or several years. Several years, okay. and it stopped, so I have no idea if she's still living or if she's incapacitated. Right. But okay. she was talking about leaving Phoenix, Arizona, and moving down to uh, somewhere around Nashville, Tennessee, where her only son was living. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that information. I appreciate that. And uh, anything you can add to what your brother had indicated there at all? Not really, I guess. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I've got a gentleman here who apparently was a student at this school, and he'd like to inter indicate his name and other things. Go ahead. My name is Al Hirschman. I uh, went to La Follette School okay. and for what? approximately seven years. And what year span is that? Can you give us some? Uh, Joyce said from 1954. Uh, from there on, the seven, seven years. The, the, my last year of grade school, I went to uh, center school because okay. we moved to Cleveland. But... Uh, the picture that I have here is basically uh, the group of kids that were uh, somewhat uh, a little bit older than I was from uh, my grade on all the way up to eighth grade. Okay. At that time. So uh, you're not that in would this. Be like a, you're not in this picture. No, I'm not in my this picture. My brother is in this picture. Okay. Could you give his name, please? Robert Hirschman. Yes. And uh, uh, there was like the Grotiga twins, uh, Gene Lutze, the Zills were in there. When you say the Grotiga twins, can you tell me their first name? Uh, Jennifer and Janelle Grotiga. Okay. Uh, Joyce Yannick was in there. Um, there was a, a Donald Schutte in there. There was a Marine Jacoby. Okay. Uh, Laverne Zill. Okay. Uh, there was a Dittman in there. Uh, what was Arlene Dittman? Arlene Dittman. Okay. Um, okay. No. Okay. Uh, I other than that, it it gives it, the picture also gives a good view of the inside of the school. Yes, I see that very nice. Where the blackbirds were, uh, blackboards uh, uh, and uh, so forth. Okay, I'm going to ask you. First of all, did we get the teacher identified? Uh, I don't know that that teacher. I, it must have been the one uh, who was after Katarabic. That was Katarabic. That was Katarabic there. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and who said that? You did. Okay, I'm coming over too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask. So the, uh, that right ahead. that picture that I have here, uh, you can keep. Really? Yes. Well, that's very nice of you, sir, but uh, okay, as long as we got you on a roll, can you tell me where the walls are f more or less facing? What's on the east wall, west wall, what are we looking the, at? Your, the picture is looking north, and uh, the, it was a one-room uh, schoolhouse. Okay. Uh, when I was there, in f the, the portion in front had a, a wall and a door, a center door, Okay. And on there, there in between the center door and the front door, there was a little like a cloak room. Okay. And a pail of water, <laughs> <laughs> where you would, uh, you had a community dipper in there. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, if you needed the water, we would go outside to the pump and fill the pail full of water and bring it back and set it down. All right. Uh, the stove was over in the uh, the north. West corner. Okay, I can see the pipe uh, yeah. part of it. Yes, sir. So uh, uh, that always had to be fired up in okay. the morning. So, so the entrance to the school came off of the highway that went by the school. Correct. And you went in directly into the mi uh, front of the school, and in the middle, uh, yeah. and there was a baffle effect there with mm -hmm. uh, some wall of some kind. You're saying? Yes, yeah, so it was like a little cloakroom. Okay, so the boys went 
right or left? No. No. no, no. It was it was it was just where everybody would come in and hang up their their coat and okay. put their shoes and All right. whatever. All right. Okay. And uh, like I, I I still remember the outside uh, uh, facilities also. When I went there, all the years, it was still outside bathrooms okay. or outhouses. Outhouses, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay, that's well, very good. basically all I can remember right now. If you have any other job. Uh, one other thing I'd like yeah. to say, when, when I went there, my teacher was basically Frederick Tretner. Okay, And And uh, a little story with that, too. Uh, we used to go outside uh, at recess time and play baseball, all boys and girls all together. Yep. And then we had one little, uh, I can't remember who it was, a little zealous boy went in there and used to ring the school bell signaling that recess was over. And uh, the teacher always got real mad because uh, he didn't want everybody to know that we were playing baseball a little longer in the neighborhood than we were supposed to. <laughs> so <laughs> He let a little... He little gave, freedom there. gave the neighborhood a little signal that we we're playing baseball a little longer than we we're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. all I have, really. Very good. Uh, maybe uh, from your end of it, when you were there, discipline-wise, uh, the teacher that she have, or he or she, that was a he, is that right? Yes. Did he have any uh, good discipline areas yes, there? Yes, there was very good discipline. Okay. Uh, you didn't step out of line or... Uh, I remember I leaned over one time to talk to the boy across the, uh, on the next desk, and Mr. Trittner was walking, uh, stepping down the aisle backwards, and he thought I was going to trip him. Oh. But I was actually talking to the kid across from me, and uh, uh, somehow he got a yardstick out and <laughs> taught me never to do that again. <laughs> Very good. Good memory. I thank you so much, sir. If you feel got any other ones after a while, let me know. Okay, I have a young lady here who will identify herself one more time and uh, point out exactly where we are with names and faces. Go right ahead, please. Bernice Dithman Chanel. Okay, th and what year is that picture? Well, let's see, I was in seventh grade, so it had to be 1944. 1944. Okay. Yeah, April 6, 1945, it was Good taken. job, good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to come in on that picture, and then you can point out whatever way you want to go to point out a few people, if you would, please. Okay, well. Nice and loud. This first girl here, I don't know who she was. Okay. You don't, who is she? Rosemary Howard. Rosemary Howard? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, then there was Donald Schutte. All right. And Jennifer Grodigood. Janelle Grody Good. Okay. And I think this was Alan Hirschman. Robert. Robert Hirschman. Robert. Okay. And then over here yep. would have been Virginia Schutte. And this would have been Elner Geeky. Caroline Schutte. Caroline Schutte. Joyce Yenick. Maureen Jacoby. Eugene Lutze. Marlon Voss. Myself, Bernice Dittman, yep. Angeline Voss, Donald Sixel, Bernetta Voss, Laverne Zill, uh -huh. and Leslie Geeky. Great job. And our teacher was Olivia Kudarabic. Kudarabic. Olivia mm -hmm. Kudarabic. I okay. have another picture here. It was just okay. a single picture. All right. That's fine. Where are we here? Yeah. Let's see. And who is that a picture of? Olivia Kudarabic. Okay. And how many years did you have her? I had her from 1939 to 1945, okay. all eight years. All eight years, okay, very good. And the size of your classes throughout those years, was it uh, always pretty steady, or can you give me kind of a rough ballpark number? Well, in my class, there was only myself and Marlon Voss. In your class? Two of us. And you were two of you all the way from first grade, first grade all the way up to eighth? Yes. Really? Okay. And um, again, the amount of kids that did go to there uh, on an average can you give me a, just a rough number well, I counted on the picture there was 18 of us okay all small. right okay very good then I have another picture here yes where we were fortunate enough to sing over WMT oh really really now can you name the people on there can you give her a hand with hold oh, here, on I, 
Oh, seated is Joyce Yenick and Virginia Schutte. Okay, let me come in closer here. Okay, seated is uh, one more time. On the floor. Yep. Joyce Yenick, she was in fifth grade. Virginia Schutte was in third grade. Okay, now we go to the first row. Which was Jennifer and Janelle Grudigwood. Okay. They oh. were in second grade. All right. The next row was, well, the teacher, Olivia Kudarabic. Okay, oh yeah. Ma Marlon Voss was in seventh grade. Okay. Maureen Jacoby was in fifth. Okay. Then myself, Bernice Dittman was in seventh. Elner Geeky was in fourth. Caroline Schutte was in fourth. Okay. Eugene Lutze was in sixth. All right. The next <coughs> row would be Donald Sixel was in eighth. Okay. Laverne Zill in eighth. Angeline Voss in eighth. Bernetta Voss in eighth. And then the last row was Leslie Geeky, and he was in eighth. Okay. And we sang it, that was in December of 1944. Okay, now can you go back a little bit there? Uh, how did you get to sing for WOMT? I don't know. <laughs> 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 I really don't know. I think at that time they had all different schools that would go and sing. Okay, and well, we, okay, 1944, World War II was still on, is that correct? So you don't, do you think it was involved with something there uh, as far as patriotic type things? Or? It could have been. Okay. I, really, I think it was a Christmas song, though. Oh, really? December. That's, what December. That's right. You're right. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Thank you very much for all that information. You got anything more? Well, I have a teat picture here of Fred Trittner. That'd be great. Oh, he was a dashing gentleman, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he came after I was gone. Okay. Wow. And you just had this one teacher all your eight years? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's unusual. Very good. Thank you. And she was very strict. She was? Okay, let's go into that. Well, I remember one time <laughs> I stuck my tongue out at her. <laughs> <laughs> and she paddled me. I lived very close to school, and she paddled me all the way home with the yardstick. No kidding. And when I got home, I got paddled back again by my dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. and your dad's name was what? Walter Dittman. <laughs> was, wasn't he on the school board also? That yes, he was on the school board. He was on the school board. And dad didn't say, well, you shouldn't touch my child. He, yes. he carried it on. So very good, very good. And you didn't stick your tongue out anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for sharing that. I appreciate it. And that. I remember yes. Donald Sixel had to sit under the desk one time. He had to sit under the desk. Yes, because he drew a picture of an elephant and then was doing his drops down in a oh. pile there. Oh. She didn't like that. She didn't like that. No. <laughs> drew it on the blackboard. Everybody, we all laughed. You drew it, he drew it on the blackboard, mm -hmm. and everybody laughed, and he ended up uh, under, under the, her desk. Under her desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, very good. I there like were more incidents. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, as far as the bathrooms again, uh, you were still having the outdoor? The outhouses, yes. The girls was on the west side of the school, okay. and the boys was on the east side of the school. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you very much for sharing all that. If you got more, please raise your hand. Okay, we have a young lady who has been presenting a lot of good information and memories, and she'd like to continue. Go right ahead, please. Well, Bernice Dittman Schnell. Very good. And there was some operetta or something going on at Lincoln High School, and we were chosen to be there. Okay. And we all had pink dresses with blue sashes. But I don't know what year it was. Okay. And do you no. know the people? Yes, I do. This first one was Esther Dora. Okay. And the second one was Audrey Prochno. All right. Now, she went to the school in Osmond, but for some reason, she was with our group with that day. With your group. Okay. The next one was myself. Oh. And Eugene Lutze was all dressed up. Yes, I see that top hat and the whole yeah. thing. Looks slick. And then Maureen Jacoby. Okay. And Joan Hickman. Okay, very good. All right. I'm going to ask for all of you, if you could remember, back in, if you went to school in, by the centennial of Wisconsin, and uh, it was 100, I believe 100 years, <coughs> 1948. Uh, did you have to do any uh, things special for that commemoration as far as? Music. I was already in high school at that time. You were in high school at that time. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir. And you asked before why they were on 
the radio station. Yes. I think Cal Rodrick was a terrific uh, music teacher. Okay. Because she had been a practice teacher by us in Pleasant Hill. Oh. And we never heard a soprano voice like hers. Okay. Remember that, Audrey? Yeah. Okay, very good. And her name was what again, please? Olivia Karabic. And she had a good voice. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, we got some other hands yep. quickly raising here. Ch Charlie Bauer, following up on that, was there a piano in the in the school that they use? Good. Okay, one good question. I'm going to... <laughs> okay, another question. Um, Kathy Sixel, why were you wearing the little gowns with the red bow if you were in the radio station? <laughs> 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 the young lady who would like to identify herself? Bernice Dittmich now. Yes. The question was why we wore those gowns. I really don't know why we did. But my mother made all the white gowns and the red bows. But I think yeah. possibly... This was after our Christmas programs, because when I went to grade school, we all had Christmas programs. We all had to learn parts. Okay. The stage was always over in Classic Shed, and that was a big day. The school board would come oh, really? and put the stage up. We had the curtains, and it, it was really fun. Santa Claus came, and I remember before I went to school, I must have been about three years old, Bud Jacoby was the Santa Claus there. He was the Santa Claus? Yes. And I was so scared of him, I wet my pants on his, <laughs> <laughs> his red uniform. Oh, you were sitting on his I lap? I was sitting on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> I was very scared of him. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think my parents were more embarrassed than I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were an excited young lady with Santa Claus there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> very good. Well, thank you so much for sharing those memories. I appreciate that. Okay, you got a young lady here who's been here the first time, I believe, and uh, she's a student, and you can indicate what years and all that type of thing. Go right ahead, please. I'm Virginia Shooty Timmy. Let's see. I went from first grade to eighth grade. Okay, and when did you, can you tell us when you graduated? 51. 51? Mm-hmm. Okay. You wanted to know where the piano was. Yes, It yes. was on the west side. The of west the side. Was it an upright piano? Yes. Okay. And was there students or teachers that used that piano quite a bit? Um, I think only the teacher. Really. I think only the teacher played. Oh, okay. Okay. As far as I remember. And were you in any of those plays that were mentioned as far as Christmas plays and things um, like that? The Centennial. We did. Oh, you did? Great. Yeah, we went to... Where was it? <laughs> Somewhere, anyway, there were four of us girls that okay. tours then. To oh, that's that horrid picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you... We were Dutch girls. You were Dutch girls. Okay, so you had to dress up a little bit? Mm-hmm. Okay. And there was Maureen Jacoby, I think Elner Geke. No. No? Okay, we Who's got a picture. On there? Jerish has a picture. She's got the picture, but okay. we don't want to photograph that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you you can recall from the days when um, you went there? Alan was talking about baseball. Yes. When um, Fred Trittner was there, he used to, we used to play baseball against you guys, didn't we? Up against Red Arrow and oh. another school. Okay. And after school, we'd kind of quit a little early, okay. and we'd go play baseball, and Fred yeah. would put us nine or ten of us kids all in his car. Really? He'd have the trunk full of kids, and we were all <laughs> piled inside, and away we'd go. Oh, great, great. It was kind of a rival... Um, rival around the area. Right. Then, huh? Okay, okay. And um, as far as other things uh, that with playing outside, any other... Did they have any, like, merry-go-rounds or teeter-towers? Merry like okay. Well, the swings were next to the outhouse, the ladies. And I think then was the merry-go-round and the teeter-totters. Okay. And there was a huge sandbox. Oh, really? And um, I probably shouldn't tell this story because my oh. brother isn't here. But apparently he took a box of my dad's razor blades. And ah. he brought them to school and the kids were playing in the sandbox with him. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they were wrapped in the little papers. Little papers, yeah. <laughs> but they were having a good time until the teacher, somebody told the teacher... <laughs> That ended that. Yeah, he got a 
He got it when he got home. <laughs> <laughs> and when you left La Follette, uh, where did you go from there? Um, well, we moved the day after I graduated. Okay, getting back, I'll step back then. Where did you live when you went to school? Right across from Edgar Jacoby. Okay. On yeah. the old 141. Okay. Did you walk to school? Most, well. Or bike? Or anything? No. Edgar Jacoby usually took us in the morning. Okay. Because my dad worked at the White House Milk Company. All right. And then we walked home, which was about a mile and a half. Okay. Now, your maiden name or your uh, unmarried name, what was that, please? Shooty. Shooty. Okay. There was a Donald Shooty mentioned in the pictures a couple times. Any relation? My brother and my sister, Caroline. Okay. All right. Very good. I thank you so much. Okay, we got a young lady here who uh, I believe also went to school at La Pala, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And could you have your name please and when you, uh, what years you went? Joyce Kramer, Joyce okay. Annie Kramer. Okay. And I moved out here from Sheboygan in 1943 and I started at La Follette. All right. And living in Sheboygan, you always had a lock your bicycle up, you know. And I took my bicycle to school the first day and I locked it up on a whatever was there. Okay. And everybody stood around and laughed at me. They never heard never of anything like that out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I went from 1943 till 1948. Good, good. And I have a picture here of the Wisconsin Centennial. We were Swedish girls, oh, but we oh. dressed like Dutch. Okay, that's the lower and picture there? The lower picture. Okay, great. And it was at Tourist Inn, and All every right. school had a different country to yes. represent. Yes, I remember them well, too, myself. Okay. And then okay, uh, could you give us a little more... No, as far as who made the costumes uh, so far? Um, no, your neighbor, that lady, Mrs., that lived south of you. This older couple that lived south of you. It was a lady that... A lady that... Yeah, I can't remember okay. her Okay, she didn't name. have any she students did. going to the school? No, I don't think she had any children at okay. all. Okay, but, but I'm going to take another picture of that group. And again, could you name off and point to the people that are standing there? All right, in the back is Eleanor Gatey, Maureen Jacoby, okay. myself, All right. and Virginia Schutte. Okay, very good. And these pictures up here were one year we went on a class trip in 1948. We went to Milwaukee. Okay, and any we particular? And we were really excited. What I, don't, I don't remember what we went to see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but... Uh, did they take a car or a bus or something? I think or? We, we must have gone on a bus because there was quite a few of us up there. Okay, all right. And um, when I got out to La Follette, yes. I had Miss Kadarabek, too. Miss And, Kadarabek, and okay. she is living yet. She's living out down west, some, south someplace with her son. All right. And um, she has very um, deep bouts of depression, her sister to her sister in law told me. Okay. And uh, when we had that picture of WMT in the paper, yes. in the Chronicle, then um, her sister-in-law contacted me and asked me to write her a letter. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a letter, but I never had any response. Okay. Did you want to read that letter a little bit? No. No? I wrote, I sent it. Oh, you sent it. Up. <laughs> I thought you had a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, I have another picture here. Yes. Oh, great. My, the second teacher I had was Mr. Tretner. All right. And he was strict. And if you were whispering, he threw whatever he had handy at you. Really? And one time, either a, like a chalk bar eraser or something, uh -huh. and we had melted some uh, 78 records into bowls, and one time he fired one of them at me once. <laughs> <laughs> it hit me on the leg. I remember that. Was there a project with that? I remember doing that also in school where you took yeah, a, it was a an 78 art project. record and then you warmed it up or and something? And then we shaped it. Shaped it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it broke. It broke, when yeah. He threw it okay. <laughs> Could you name a few of those people? This is um, my last year, 1948. Okay. This is Mr. Tretner. All right. Virginia Schutte. Okay. Gerald Hirschman. Maureen Jacoby. Ron Ronald Hickman. Okay. Jennifer Grudigot. Ed Jacoby Jr. Okay. Myself. Uh -huh. Richard Klessig. Yep. Reinald Illig. Elizabeth Illig, Robert Hirschman, Eleanor Geeky, Emmett Wagner, Caroline Schutte, Alan Hirschman, Janelle Grudigot, 
Henry Dittman, mm -hmm. um, James Delman, Donald Schutte, Ann Schutte, and Fred Tretner Jr., oh. and Richard Zill. Okay, great job. Thank you. I uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we have a gentleman that's going to point out a few things. Go right ahead, please. Charlie Bauer, we just got done with our break here, and we got a little photograph up here. And above the entrance, there's a sign on this old building here. And it's the building after 1887's renovation because the, the steeple is on here. But I, I don't see the little, what I call a Lutheran window in here, this little half moon window. And on the side here is a water pump. Does anybody know what that sign said? Over the door or remember seeing a sign over the door? A gentleman here who uh, can uh, verify something, go right ahead and identify yourself, please. Elvin Voss. You was talking about that pump. When I went to school, we did not have a well there. We well, didn't. To, we had to carry all the water from the cheese factory, from Blanky's cheese factory, and no. put it in a bubbler when we got to school. Okay, now the, the cheese factory is located where, please? Right on the corner there on Union Road and uh, F, or not F, uh, Point, Creek. Point Creek. Okay, okay. But that tore down at least 20 years ago already, mm -hmm. maybe longer, huh? The building is... No, he, he, he rebuilt the garage there. Yeah. So that was the cheese factory that you had to go and get, get some water. water. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was that the duties of the students? No, well, we changed jobs. Okay. They had two of them. We usually went two by two, you know. All right. Okay. And a lot of time after, it was spilled before we ever got to school. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was quite a way to carry it. Yeah, yeah. In an open bucket. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what years did you go to school there, sir? Oh, I just don't know. <laughs> I went to school. I had one teacher all the years I went to school. And can you name that teacher? A Dorothy Goldie. Dorothy Goldie. Mm -hmm. okay. Goldie, yeah. Okay, so maybe this gentleman here who had uh, worked with us I, a little bit, he might be able to pinpoint. I think I maybe was seven years old when I started. Okay. And the bad thing of it was I did not know one word of English. Really? When I started school, I did not know one word of English. It was hard. Okay, now I got to pinpoint a little bit where you lived. Where did you live at the time you went to school? Well, only a little block west of the Follett School and then to the south, maybe a good half a mile or so. So you were on Union Road then? Union Road, yeah. Okay, and again, your your name again, please? Eldon Voss. And your dad's name? Was Roy Voss. Roy Voss, okay. So you lived approximately, what, a half a mile or more from school? Well, about half, a little bit better than half, maybe. Okay. Now, because you didn't, you spoke German, I presume. Yeah. And your family all spoke German? Right. You had a tough time. I had a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> was there any brothers and sisters that you had that helped you a little bit, or how did no, this all I work out? No, I was the oldest one, so I couldn't get the help. Wow. How did you do it? Well, uh, my neighbor, Clarence Schutte. Clarence Schutte. He knew how to talk German and English, and he... Oh told the teacher what I was talking about, and then he told me back again. Really? In German. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was quite some. Wow. And uh, were, how many was in your class when you were going to school? I think there must have been in the low 30s. Okay. That was in all the school. Yeah. But now my dad and my aunt, they tell me when they went to that school, Roy Voss, Stanley Voss, and Mrs. Hilbert Price, they told me there were 62 people in that school, which I almost can't believe. Okay. Because okay. the school wasn't that big. Yeah, yeah. They must have been sitting on each other's laps. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any schoolmates that are were with you at school? Are they here this evening at all? Uh, uh, Edward Sill, I don't know, is he here? No. Shorty Sill? I don't know if I went to school. I think I went to school with the Geeky Boys yet, huh? Maybe not with Leslie. Maybe I don't know. I know I went to school with that, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, very good. And I think that's about all I went to school with. Yeah. All right. And Caroline Lutzi I went to school with, but okay. I don't think she's here tonight. Okay, no. very good. She's Caroline Rodeball now. All right. And as far as the, you went to all up to eighth grade, is that correct? Yeah. And did you go beyond that when you got out of La Fala? I was glad to get out of eighth grade. You were glad? <laughs> 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 if you want to divulge, sir, how, how was your uh, report card? Being that you had, I don't want to call it a handicap, but you had a, you know, you yeah, had a tough... It was pretty good all the time. Pretty side. good. Yeah. And you depended on this Clarence Schutte yeah. pretty much. Mm -hmm. Well, you did a fine job. I take my hat off to you. <laughs> Very good. And 
did you go into farming or something after I've, school? I farmed all my life, and I've been driving school bus now 54 years, and I'm still driving. Really? <laughs> and if I may intrude on your age, how old are you, sir? How old would you think? Oh, how about 78? You got it right on the head. Oh! <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> no, I'm 85. You're, oh, come on. <laughs> My goodness. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Alan Hirschman again. Yes, sir. Uh, all I want to say is that uh, I remember my school days. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of things that we did in this school that uh, school children can't do nowadays anymore. We always stood up every morning and said, pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay. We Great. turned, everybody had to stand up and look towards the flag. Okay. And uh, uh, we always had a picture of George Washington on the wall and Abraham Lincoln on the wall All right. and then the current president on the wall. Okay. So uh, I think a lot of those uh, good old days and some of the rights we had as uh, kids are long gone in today's schools. So mm -hmm. that's all I wanted to say. Well, I do thank you. It was a very good point to make, sir. Okay, we've got uh, two gentlemen, they're brothers, and this gentleman here I think would like to start. Go right ahead, identify yourself, please. <coughs> yes, uh, Wilbur Yankee again. <coughs> Nobody seems to remember that big old stove we had in the left-hand corner of the school to heat the whole school building. Okay. And we had the woodshed, which we had in <laughs> all wood. Uh, <clears throat> another thing, uh, Mr. Voss mentioned they had to carry the water. Well, they had a pump there, the pump that's alongside the building there. And it was a little hard to control, and I was pumping water one day, and a handle shot up, and it chipped two of my teeth here. Oh, <laughs> God. And I carried that trademark till about four years ago, and I had to buy two new teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All from that pump. And uh, the other thing that uh, <clears throat> he talked about music, we had a harmonica band when I was there. Really? Yes. A harmonica band. Now, isn't that something great? Yeah. And were you among it? Oh, yes, I was in it. Okay. And do you play a little bit yet? Short of air. Short of air. <laughs> <laughs> How many was in the band? Gee, I don't remember. Okay. Was it all all the kids in school that were part of this, or was there a select few? Oh, not all of them. Okay. But I, I couldn't say how many. There's probably 10 or 12. And was there someone, there had to be some kind of an instructor or teacher to get everybody going here. Mrs. Who was Kodorabic that? Mrs. was our teacher. Mrs. Kodorabic? Yes, okay. the teacher. She pushed that, okay. Okay, very good. Good thought, sir. And uh, your brother, does he remember any of those things, too? Nothing special. Okay. <laughs> and your name one more time. That's the like okay. Okay, very good. And as far as uh, after you left La Follette, where did you go? Did you go on to any other schooling, or did you go on the farm, or whatever? No, could, I didn't go on to school. You did not go on to school? I guess like, like Elf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you helped out on the farm or something? Yes. Okay. All right. Anything that you'd like to add on that part of it? No, I, all my education was eight years. And all after right. that, it's all the school of hard knocks. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you so much. Okay, we've got a gentleman here who raised his hand. He'd like to identify himself. Charlie Bauer. I was just wondering, <clears throat> some of the other schools that we did the history on, they always had at the end of the year, they had like a school picnic did, did the school go to a different park or was the picnic held on the grounds there and, and what kind of games did you play we learned that center school did this thing with a chestnut and a string and that's the first time anybody ever heard of that particular game and i was just wondering if the kids from la follette school did that okay good one good question Here we got a young lady who uh, would present something go right ahead please kathy sixel in 1906 an additional one-fourth acre was purchased to enlarge the school ground in 1937, electric lights were added, and a well was drilled to eliminate the need to carry water from the nearby cheese factory. In 1948, the school was heated with a floor furnace instead of the old box stove. And a large library cabinet provided storage for books, and the room also contained a radio, piano, steel file cabinet, chairs, work table, and other modern school equipment. In 1870, the enrollment was 48, and the highest enrollment was 1875 when 61 pupils attended. And on December 1st, 1959, <coughs> district number two was consolidated with, with district number one, and La Follette School was closed. And as of 19, uh, 
76, the building was still standing. Okay. And I got that off of the computer. There's a site you can go on to. Sure. Oh, okay, yeah, and that, that site, and it has all the teachers and things, too. Did you go into it, Frederick? Okay. My yes, name sir. is Richard Zill. Yes, sir. Uh, I went to school and must have been from 1946 on or something like that. Okay. And uh, there's not too much that I like to remember about it. I kind of forgot most of it. But I, I remember one thing about the old wood stove up in the corner. Okay. When the kids used to go outside in, in winter and we'd be playing in the snow and stuff, everybody got kind of soaked. And it was kind of a good habit to take your overalls or jeans or whatever you had and you'd hang them over a railing by the stove to dry them. Okay. And everybody would be running around in, in school with their underwear on. Really? And a lot, <laughs> a lot of them with long underwear and it's yeah. in the classroom until your pants were dry again and you'd put them on and go out for the next recess period. <laughs> Am I glad I came to you? <laughs> well, very good. Other than that, I know that later on, the last years that I was there, they changed the oil, oil furnace. Okay. That the old wood burner was gone. All right. And, uh, okay. Richard always had one button missing on his flat thing. And I... oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for a quick escape. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other thoughts, be sure and give me a buzz. Huh? We had a young lady, and she also attended, I guess, La Follette, and she'll tell us all about her days there. Go right ahead, please. My name is Nancy Crocked Oldrich, and we lived right around the corner from La Follette School on oh. Union Road to okay. the south. So I could walk to school. I only went there for first and second grade. Oh, okay. And then the school closed. Oh. Um, my classmates were Larry Albrecht. Peggy Voss, Joyce Schutte, myself, and I believe Randy Sunneman. Okay. And I remember the swings, which went really high. Okay. And the sandbox and the outdoor toilets. So oh, okay. <laughs> it still had outdoor toilets yet? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. And uh, <coughs> the teacher you had at oh, the time you went there? Mr. Seward. Mr. Stewart? Seward. Seward. The last okay. teacher. Last teacher for you. Okay. Very good. And after that... Uh, we went to Point River, and then we had Mr. Voss as a bus driver. <laughs> okay. Now, the Point River School is located, uh, can you give to me a look? east. Uh, east? East of La Follette, a couple All right. miles. Okay. All right. And you finished up your up to your eighth grade at that point there? No, then no. we, that consolidated, and then oh. we went to Osmond School for two years. Did and the name Osmond School, was it Osmond? It was on uh, Point Creek. And okay. 42. All right, gotcha. And then that consolidated with the Keele School District, okay. and I finished up in Keele. Wow, you traversed the territory yes, a lot. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Very good information. Very good. Okay. Well, I think okay, uh, I'm speaking to a gentleman. He'll identify himself, but did you walk to La Follette School? I'll have your name first. Uh, name is Richard Zill. Yeah, we walked. It was only maybe a little over half a mile. Okay. And I know I had three teachers while I was there. I know I had Fred Trittner, and there was a, a Wilson, I don't know where Thea Wilson her first name was, and we had a Schumacher too. I forget what her first name was. Okay, okay, okay. As far as, if I may ask, uh, pertaining to lunch, uh, was it a brown bag, a lunch pail, or did they have hot lunches for you? <laughs> Could I have identification uh, on you, please? Nancy Oldrich. Uh, it would have been. Probably a lunch bag or uh, a lunch box, um, but not hot lunch. <laughs> okay, all right. You didn't put anything on the stove or anything to make it warmer? I don't remember much about the inside of the building. I guess the swings must have impressed me that from the first and you. second grader, because <laughs> that's what I remember the most. Okay, and again, I'll just go right, I'll be right there. Uh, again, when you got out of school at that certain time when you moved to another school, you still had the outhouses, and what year was that? I believe when they said it closed, like 50, what, 59, or the last year it was there. Okay, so and you still had, uh, at that time, regular outhouses? Right. Yep. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You had a young lady who raised her hand, and she has some information to provide us. Go right ahead, please. I'm Joyce Kramer. Um, we carried our own lunch buckets, okay. <clears throat> kept them in the cloakroom out in the hall, All right. and sometimes our sandwiches froze, and our milk. Really? Mm -hmm. 
And then um, later on, when I was in the upper grades, then the mothers took turns in winter. They oh. took turns bringing a meal at noon, well, and serving nice. it, and then they went, left home, went home again. Wow, that was very nice. That, those were real treats. Yeah, yeah. And I know one lady made prune um, donuts filled with prunes. Oh, yeah. And they were just hot from the oven, or hot from the grease. <laughs> and she'd bring them warm, and they were really good. <laughs> oh, very good. And Mrs. Lutze made the best chili. And who was that again, please? Mrs. Um, Herman Lutze made the best chili. Oh, she made the best chili. <laughs> okay. So really, it was a lot. Was it the students' mothers yeah. that did this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they took turns and helped mm -hmm. you people out a little mm -hmm. bit. Oh, great. Just in the winter, in the okay. real cold months. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back a little bit, too to uh, uh, duties. I know a lot of, few people have talked about their duties. Did you remember any duties that you were uh, indicated to take care of? Yeah, we had a wheel on the wall. A wheel. With our names on and, and jobs. Oh. And every week, I think, maybe a, every week, the wheel would turn and you had to do whatever job your name point was. Really? Next to it. Very it was okay. cleaning blackboard, washing blackboards, and so you weren't stuck. Racers. You weren't stuck with really one job all the time. No, Is, uh, no. everybody had to do well, every job. Well, that great? Oh, job. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for those memories. We have a young lady who raised her hand one more time. Go right. ahead. Joyce Springer. Yes. Um, he was talking about the flag before, or the salute to the flag. Yes. We had to take the flag out in the morning. Okay. And raise it real slow. Outside or mm -hmm. in? Or if it's, yeah. And then every evening we had to, uh, before we left, we had to bring it down and you lower the flag real fast. And then we had to fold it just like really? in half and then in half and then so it turned out to be a triangle. Really? Mm hmm And if it rained, somebody had to go out and get it down too. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Never knew that. Okay, we got a young lady who had a thought and she'd like to give us her name, please. Uh, Edith, let's see. And in this book it just says that they had mostly Irish teachers in the German community, and their pay was above the average pay for other teachers in the town. I thought that was just real interesting. <laughs> Does that, could you say that one more time, that these teachers... Uh, they, their pay was above the average pay other teachers in the town. Really? Okay, <laughs> well, thank you. That's good information, too. <laughs> Okay, we got a young lady who raised her hand, and she'd like to provide some her name and information. Go right ahead. Okay, my name is Naomi Schmidt. Yes. And I was looking at the Christmas program that's on the screen. Okay. And some of the songs that they sang, like, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, and Jesus Loves Me. You can never sing in the public schools anymore. No, oh, dude. Oh, that is true. You brought up Just a good point. Oh, thing in the past. Okay. So those are the songs that were sung at that time. Okay. And was the school you went to, could you give us that? Was it the I problem? went to Pleasant Hill. You went to Pleasant Hill, but they did that there? Yes, yes. We oh, sang okay. them too. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you and so much for providing Old Rugger Cross and all those old songs. Yeah. We sang them in school. Wonderful. Okay. Good thinking. Thank you. And your name, please? Joyce Creamer. And somebody said before only the teacher played the piano, but at Christmas time, Piano selections were played by Eleanor Geeky. Yep, Eleanor Geeky. Mm -hmm. And right. she played the Swinging Waltz, Torador, First Rose Waltz, Tweedledee Dum, Starlight Waltz, and Yonder Rock Reclining. And Edgar Jacoby Jr. gave the welcome. And Bobby Hirschman and Donald Schutte, oh, it was Edgar Jacoby, Bobby Hirschman, and Donald Schutte had Holly's Welcome was a little skit, I guess. Okay. And Henry Dittman had a recitation, A Christmas Bell. Richard Klessig had a recitation, Glad I'm a Boy. And I can remember when he said that, he was really comical. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Zill had a uh, one called A Short Tale. And Barbara Logan had one called Probably. Okay. And then the La Follette Songsters, under the direction of Miss Katarabic, Saying Onward Christian Soldiers, Silent Night. Okay. Um, that's an Irish lullaby, Joy to the World, Jesus Loves Me, White Christmas, Adeste Fidelis, O Come All Ye Faithful, Angels on High, and Onward Christian Soldiers. Okay. And then there was a reading by Maureen Jacoby called Santa Goes Commercial. And then How Can It Be? An Exercise by Donald Schutte, Edgar Jacoby, and Bobby Hirschman.
Okay. Writing to Santa Claus was a monologue by Eugene Lutze. Okay. A Christmas acrostic was given by Bobby Hirschman, Donald Schutte, Rosemary Howard, Edgar Jacoby Jr., Elner Geeky, Caroline Schutte, Virginia Schutte, Jennifer Godigot, Janelle Godigot. That was a little play, I guess. Mm -hmm. In the lower grade, the lower grades sang Jingle Bells, Old Santa Claus is Coming, Oh, Come Little Children, Santa Has Never Failed Us Yet, Jingle Bells. I don't know if you want me to read this whole thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to it. Mm. That's a big program. Yeah. Wow, they really put it on. And it, here's oh. another piano solo by Elmer Geeky. Mm -hmm. And a short skit by Eugene Lutze and Maureen Jacoby. Okay, keep it going. All right, and another skit, Christmas Symbols, Eugene Lutze, Bernice Dittman, Maureen Jacoby, Marlon Voss, Joyce Yenny, and Leslie Geeky. And a recitation by myself called Pocket Books. And Soldier Boys was a skit by Janelle Grodigot, Bobby Hirschman, Donald Schutte, Edgar Jacoby Jr., Rosemary Howard, Jennifer Grodigot. And it was see our flag. There are many flags in many lands. Soldier Boy, the flag silhouette, and God Bless America. And that the audience all sang together. Mm -hmm. Now, was there something from this harmonica people? Yeah, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then a comic monologue was given by Donald Sixel. Okay. And a comic action song by Angeline Voss, Bernetta Voss, and Laverne Zill. And a dialogue by Elmer Geeky, Joyce Yenig, Maureen Jacoby, Eugene Lutze, Marlon Voss. And then the La Follette Quintet sang the favorite hymns that she was talking about. That was Angeline Voss, Maureen Jacoby, and Laverne Zill, Bernice Tittman, and myself, and Bernetta Voss was the accompanist. It was, what a friend we have in Jesus, lead me, Savior. <clears throat> stand up, stand up for Jesus, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Another piano solo by Elner Geeky, Parker Roll. A comic monologue, Husbands and Other Troubles by Angeline Voss. The La Follette Harmonica Trio, Angeline Voss, Bernetta Voss, Laverne Zill. And they played Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Battle Hymn of the Republic, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. The Sailor, Marine's Hymn, and Goodbye. And then there was a piano solo, The Mountain by Marine Jacoby. Wow. And there was another play <laughs> consisting of Leslie Geeky, Angeline Voss, Eugene Lutze, Marlon Voss, Laverne Zill, Bernetta Voss, Marine Jacoby, Donald Sixel, and Joyce Scenic, Bernice Dittman, Virginia Schutte, Elner Geeky, and Caroline Schutte. And the grand finale were song Santa Claus is coming to school and good night and then Santa Claus came that was a full program yeah, and we did this every year yes and we always liked to, to practice because we practiced like every day for a week we didn't yeah. have to do any studies studies yeah <laughs> <laughs> one of the benefits the perks right. huh? very good well thank you for reading that because it, it shows that they really put the efforts into mm -hmm. the program at that time. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Will you identify yourself, please, and provide whatever you have there for info? I'm Fred Jacoby, and I want to comment on the Christmas programs. Yes. And it was mentioned before about Olivia Kadarabic uh, doing a especially good job in music, and that was, I think, pretty well known. And then with uh, my family's connection with the school and knew all the people there, we went up there a number of times, and I remember and you could just hardly get in that school building. That would be so jammed with people. And uh, steamy, you know, winter night uh, for the Christmas programs. And uh, they were fantastic, as, as you see. And so people came. And then um, another thing, if, if I could, I could, I could mention the uh, honorable mentions for the, yes, sir. the students. Sure, that'd be great. All right. Uh, back in 1922, uh, Louise Jacoby had a third in a practical arithmetic. Uh, in 23, Walter Dittman got an honorable mention for an adding contest. And in 24, honor Walter Dittman, honorable mention adding. In 1929, Albert Jacoby, better known as Bud, um, honorable mention in language. 37, Robert Kretsch uh, won a town contest. It doesn't say what it was. 48, Marine Jacoby was on the honor roll. 49, Eleanor Geeky was on the honor roll. Uh, and 52, Ed Jacoby Jr. was on the honor roll. 53, Richard Klusik was in the honor roll. In 56, there was no longer an honor roll. And then they had uh, 
they appointed ushers, and that was a recognition in itself. In 1961, that must have been the last year there, Martha Jacoby was an usher for the graduation exercises. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. They were doing well there. Okay, I got a young lady okay, here. Okay, my name is Lorraine Schwinn. Hi, Lorraine. And I went to La Follette School. Yes? It's many, many years ago before all those guys, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went to school with Elton. Right. Oh, okay. And uh, I had three teachers. I had Dorothy Goldie and Clarence, um, what was it, Clarence um, Silversack, Marion Teal, and Olivia Karabic. I l okay. She was the last one I had. All right. And uh, about anything, excitement in school? I don't know. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and can you kind of pinpoint the years if you'd like to do that? That is something I don't know. It's got to be, well, cry if I graduated in when I was 12 or 13 years old, it's uh, got to be over 70 years. Okay. All right. Well, now, as far as where you lived in relation to the school. I lived um, about a mile north of it on uh, north. Okay. Union Road. Okay. All right. And you walked every day? Yes, most of the time, okay. except if they took us with the sleigh and the horse. Oh, really? Okay. When it was snowy. Did you, you come from, from a farm, is that right? Yes. Okay. Did They always said they built cheese uh, ma mil uh, factories, cheese, cheese factories, thank you. <laughs> cheese factories close to the schools. Yeah. Did you happen to ride at all with your dad or whoever would took the... All the milk all to the, the milk? factory? Oh, yes. Okay. That we went when we went to school. All right. So you, did you have any chores to do in the morning before you went to school? We always had chores. We had to milk our cows. We, each one had a separate cow we had to milk. Okay. And then we could, after that, we were done. And I'm sure that was all by hand. Is that correct? Yes, it was. Okay. So you got done with the milking. Maybe did you eat a little <laughs> breakfast and then jump on the... Milk wagon or a sleigh to go to? Yep, or walk. Or walk. Okay. And when you got home, now you walked home? Yes, most of the time. All right. And when you got home, what was waiting for you? Well, it's always the same chores. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Start over milking for the evening. I yeah. Think. Okay. All right. Okay. And after you left La Follette, where did you go? or? That what? was it. That was it. There I did all kinds of neighborhood jobs. I worked for a Mrs. Jacoby when she had surgery. Now, Mrs. I, Jacoby, could you give her a uh, full name? Emma? Emma was Dr that your mother? Uh, Bud's mother. Bud's mother. Oh, Bud's mother, okay. Yeah. Emma Spread. Jacoby. Yeah. Okay, and you did what there again? I took, war I worked for her when she had surgery. All right. And stuff like that, and after that I did all kinds of jobs like that for people. Okay, okay. Did you have any sweethearts when you went to school? No. No sweetheart, huh? <laughs> you didn't pass a little valentine to some young No, girl? I guess not. You didn't do that. <laughs> okay, I want to thank you so much. And we have a young lady here who uh, attended La Follette, and she would like to give us her name and maybe a little memory or two. Jesse Huntsman, Log Logan Huntsman. Your, I, your maiden name is Logan? Yes. Okay. And we lived in County F. All right. On a farm, and I... I don't remember too much about going to La Follette School. It must have been first or second grade. Okay. And you didn't. You did not finish uh, La, at La Follette. No, I did not. Okay. Where did you go from La Follette? Um, I went to St. Isidore's in Osmond, okay. and then we moved to Clover. Okay. After that. And what years did you go to La Follette? I think it was first or second grade. I'm not sure. You know what the year would have been at that time? If I can intrude on that. <laughs> 42, okay. 43. All right, okay, all right. And uh, again, you, you walked to school, you said, and that was a distance of what again, please? Oh, probably a mile. Okay, all right, very good. And anything uh, you recall at all? Now, the teacher, how about that? Do you remember that? It was Olivia Colorado. Oh, it was, okay. Yes. Did you get any musical things from her that... Uh, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that didn't work. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing that. And if you got any other thoughts, we'd love to talk to you. Thank you. Okay, we have a young lady who raised her hand. Go right ahead, please. Uh, Kathy Sixel, and I want to. I have a question for Jesse Huntsman. Um, in that Christmas program, Barbara was in it. I heard that. But it didn't say your name, so you had to be in school a little bit longer than first grade, right? 
I if I remember her being in fourth grade. In fourth grade. And I wanted to know, well, did you have Valentine parties and things like that at your school? And what did you do at these uh, types of events? Okay. Halloween parties. Halloween, okay. Mr. Schnell? Yes. I remember one time we went to Lincoln Park. We went down to the zoo. Oh, okay. And then some of the fathers, we drew, well, the parents took us, and then some of the fathers would do the frying of the hamburgers, and the mothers would bring some food. Okay. We always had Valentine parties, exchanging Valentine hearts. All right. Good. Keep it going. <laughs> and Halloween was always at night. At night? Okay, after school. Then. After school. Ah, okay. But okay. then our parents would pick us up, I guess. Or okay. Maybe we walked home. I don't know. <laughs> okay. As far as your class, uh, I know it did, it, you did mention it, uh, say so, but did you indicate how, who all was in your particular class? Before? It was just myself and Marlon Ross. Okay, that was the only two. Only two. All right, okay. All right, thank you very much. Okay, we got a young lady who uh, would like to speak her name and uh, give us a few thoughts of her own. Go right ahead, please. I'm Virginia Timmy. Um, we used to walk home, and well, on the way home, you know, the ditches were always full of snow and ice, and well, we'd have to open up all the ditches from the ice okay. and walk on top of the big hills, and well, <laughs> we got home kind of late at times, and we got falling out and then one time it, the snow you know we really it was spring and we really oh. had to open up the ditches and get rid of all this oh, ice, ice and yeah it took us almost two hours to get home and <laughs> it was kind of dark by the time we got home and we got spanked <laughs> so very good. do that again <laughs> very good and um they were talking about the christmas program yes. i can remember the first year or two she wet pants, but I just stood up there with holding my dress up and cried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, maybe I can ask you, with your sharp memory on that, um, where, where was the stage located? I don't know if we talked about that. Was it on a certain wall or? The north side. Right. North side? It was side? across the whole front. Yep. And that would have been... Uh, Near the stove area up there, someplace. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think there were dressing rooms on each end. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. The stage was in the middle. Okay. And as far as the stage, you they said it was stored in some building and brought into the Across school. Across the road in the what was it? Herbert Classic <coughs> Barn. Yeah. Barn. Okay. <coughs> and um, people from other schools would come. Parents oh, really? and stuff would come, and I can remember we used to go to different schools and see their programs. Really? Oh, that was big entertainment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, well, yeah. Back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. Was anybody in your relation on the school board? No. Okay. Um, Olivia Karabic, <coughs> teacher, used to room and board across the street at Edgar <coughs> Kobe's. Okay. And I think that's sometimes why he took us to school and drove us because he drove her too. Oh, okay. So when we'd get there, it'd be kind of cold in school. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the old schools cooled down a little bit. There was no janitors at that no. time. <laughs> okay, any other thoughts you might have that we could speak about? Hmm. Not that I can think of right <laughs> off. Okay. I'm going to ask a personal question. Uh, did you have any sweetheart or valentine in your... I don't School think that, so. As you <laughs> like. Can't remember. You can't remember that, huh? No. <laughs> okay, thank you. Freshman hey. again. Yes, sir. Uh, when we, when I was in school, uh, uh, certain times of the year or year uh, uh, before the end of the year, we used to go on a on a school picnic, and that was at the Tom Check Park. Down it was down on uh, LS. Okay. Towards between uh, Manitowoc, <coughs> towards Manitowoc. Okay. It went into a farmer's yard and then down into the field and then onto the there's a creek leading down into the, down by the lake. That's okay. where we used to have our picnics. All there. right. Okay. That's all I remember. Was there a ball diamond down there also, mm -hmm. or? Uh, well, there was a, uh, a instant ball diamond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we played. Mm hmm And what year was that, that you recall that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall. Okay. Year. Well, uh, age-wise, for your, were you in eighth grade when it happened, or seventh? No, you remember? I went to school at La Follette for seven years, seven, okay. seven grades. In the eighth grade, I went to center. Okay. 
So it had to be during that mm -hmm. span of time. Okay, very towards, good thought. Towards my later. Thank you for remembering that. School. Very good. Okay, I got a young lady who is going to have provide some information. Go right ahead, please. I'm Irene Dine, and uh, about two weeks, two months ago, and we talked about the uh, Pleasant Hill School. Yes. We talked about the teachers, and they're listed in this little folder that came from the Centerville Settlement okay. that was put out. Yes. And uh, they listed a teacher here as Louise Getchell. And just on, on June 6th in 2007, I always read the 75 years ago list. Yes. And uh, it says, the second of a series of piano students' recitals presented Friday evening at the studio of Miss Mary C. Hopkins. Nearly 50 students were present and a delightful musicale. Participants were, I won't read all of them, um, but uh, um, I'll just want um, Ione Bender, Reuben Common, Irma Common, and Louise Getchell. Wow. So she, uh, 75 years ago on June 6th, 1932, she was at a recital. Oh, that <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're at the end of our meeting this uh, evening, and uh, Kathy will give us uh, our conclusion, if you will, and maybe what's happening in the future. Go right ahead, please. I want to thank everybody for coming. It was quite an interesting meeting, and it was for me because I never knew the Hirschmans, and they used to live next door to... Uh, where my husband's uh, farm was and where I live today. Okay. Our next meeting is going to be July 9th. It will be here and it's going to be Maple Leaf School and I will need lots of help with that because I have no idea who went to this school and so if anybody knows of anything, of anybody, please let me know. Okay, very okay. good. Okay. Okay, and we're signing off uh, for the evening and uh, give, can you give us a date one more time please? July 9th. Okay, that's... 2007. The, that was the next meeting. Next meeting. Okay, I'll have you just identify yourself, please. Kathy Sixel. Thank you, Kathy. Charlie Bauer. Thank you, Charlie. Melvin Yeady. Thank you, Melvin. Leslie Geeky. Thank you for coming, sir. Wilbur Geeky. Thank you for coming, I appreciate it. Caroline Geeky. Thank you. Lawrence Crockett. Lawrence, thank you. Right. Kathy Wagner. Thank you, Kathy. Walter Christ. Thank you, Wally. Eugene Moiser. Thank you, Eugene. Al Hirschman. Thank you, Al, for coming. A lot of information. Very good, sir. Arnold Hirschman. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Naomi Schmidt. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Daniel Schmidt. Thank you. Bernice Schnell. Bernice, thank you for all the information. Very good. I appreciate that very much. Leroy Schnell. Leroy, thank you for coming, sir. Virginia Timmy. Thank you for coming. You provided a, a nice tidbit of information for us. Elvin Voss. Thank you for coming. You did a good job. Audrey Ertl. Thank you, Audrey. Fred Jacoby. Fred, thank you for everything and good information also. Rick Fires, sir. Thank you for coming, sir. We appreciate you. Edith, let's see. Thank you, Edith. Appreciate it. Joyce Kramer. Joyce, nice job tonight. Good thank information. You. Thank you. Lorraine Schwinn. Thank you for coming, Lorraine. <laughs> appreciate you. Nancy Older. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Richard Zill. Thank you, Richard, for coming. Marilyn Zill. Marilyn, thank you for coming. John Regan. John, appreciate it. Willard Mathias. Willard, thank you for coming. Alice Mathias. Thank you, Alice. Jesse Logan Huntsman. Thank you for coming also. We appreciate you. Thank you. Irene Dine. Thank you, Marie. Okay, uh, this is Jerry O'Neill, and I thank you all for coming this evening. We appreciate all the information, and we hope to see the whole uh, group of you for next month's meeting. And I guess uh, Kathy will just do a quick sign off here. Well, again, thank you, everyone. And uh, it was a pleasure to me have you all here tonight and see you in the future. Okay, thank you, Kathy.